uh, in Shibek effect, when we have temperature difference, like say heat source and uh, like heat sink, but that basically hot end and cold end, solid semiconductor such as P and N type, uh, when it connected in a series, electrical series, but thermally parallel, it can generate uh, electric voltage. Okay. Now, uh, uh, if we in in uh, in another effect, if we can give uh, this power, uh, then the solid semiconductor can generate the temperature difference. This is called Peltier, Peltier effect. Uh, the difference between Shebeck effect and Peltier effect is that Shebeck effect we provide temperature difference, we get voltage. In case of Peltier effect, we uh, provide voltage but get the temperature difference. And this active cooling end can be used for refrigeration. And there are several products in the market based on Peltier effect. But at this moment, we are interested in Shebeck effect. So how uh, this thermoelectric device looks like so th a real thermoelectric device looks like this. So this is like a one centimeter by one centimeter, even two centimeter by two centimeter square shape. And each uh, device has multiple uh, P and N type legs. And this P and N type legs are basically joined by electrically series, but thermally parallel. And this P and N type legs are solid inorganic semiconductors. Okay. So there where our research uh, belongs to. So now, uh, uh, I'll show you a uh, very uh, uh, simple experiment uh, conducted by uh, uh, one of my students, Ekashmi Rathor. So uh, uh, I'm playing this video where we have uh, ice cold water and we, we are going to pour a hot water from a kettle and then we, we will connect this fan uh, which is connected to a motor and of course to a thermoelectric device in that. So the, the device is like this. Okay. So uh, now, uh, now uh, this is cold water and this is hot water. So we are going to feel hot water here. Okay. So the temperature difference, basically the temperature difference between cold water and hot water. And this is generally how much? This is generally maximum 50 to 60 degree. Okay. Or even like 70 degree. So 70 degree Celsius. So now with this temperature difference, you can see uh, the, this white part is a thermoelectric device. Uh, it can, uh, it can uh, run the fan. So, yeah. So from the temperature difference between cold water and hot water, this thermoelectric device can run the fan. So, uh, so now, uh, wh why we should do research in thermoelectrics? Basically, what is the importance of thermoelectrics? Okay. So, uh, if you see total energy consumption car uh, for India in 2018 and world for 2018, we, we, so please note this is total energy consumption. Uh, this is not uh, <coughs> what we are producing, uh, how we are consuming. So total energy consumption in India. In 2018, we generally consume energy in terms of coal, petroleum, and natural gas. So coal, hydro, nuclear, basically burning of coal, we generate electricity. And combustion of petroleum and natural gas basically uh, 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 runs the uh, all transportation and, and uh, industrial sector. But after use of enormous amount of energy in terms of electricity, uh, in, in terms of electricity, uh, and uh, but, uh, transportation of uh, uh, an industrial sector, 65% uh, utilized energy rejects as a heat. So we only use 35%. Okay. So that means uh, we, we always uh, waste 65 to 70% uh, energy as a waste heat. So can we convert this waste heat uh, to some kind of useful form that is electricity? So now if we think this waste heat end can be uh, the hot end of the Seebeck effect, where cold end can be some lower temperature or even room temperature. Then uh, if we can have in, uh, like uh, new semiconductors like uh, or efficient semiconductor like P and N type semiconductor, this can convert this waste, waste heat to electricity. So that's why the research in thermoelectric is extremely important uh, in this scenario, uh, not only in India as well as in globe. And uh, I'm sure uh, uh, the, uh, there are several groups in the world uh, actively pursuing research in this field. Okay. So, uh, so now what is what are, what are the uses for this uh, thermoelectric so it can it can convert direct heat to, heat to electricity in large scale it can uh, convert uh, uh, waste heat to electricity in power plants like chemical thermal nuclear steel power plant i'll show one example of where steel power plant waste heat can be converted and then in medium scale it is already used in uh, several high end cars like uh, companies like uh, bmw ford or uh, general motor where uh, exhaust pipe waste heat can be converted uh, uh, to electricity and then one battery can be charged with this uh, 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 electricity from what we get from thermoelectric. 
And also, uh, this uh, power generation mode of thermoelectrics, that is basically Shibek effect, is already used for last 35 to 40 years by NASA and Russia's uh, Russian Space Foundation to power their sp spacecraft for deep space mission. So I don't have much time to tell that, but uh, one can go uh, to uh, Wikipedia and uh, see that how uh, interestingly one can convert, uh, one can power the spacecraft in for deep space mission. Okay, the new uses for thermoelectrics are basically the solar thermoelectrics because we know all solar cell which convert uh, uh, visible part or EV part of the uh, solar light to electricity. But now if we can combine this solar uh, uh, cell with thermoelectricity, the, uh, the IR part that is the heat part of the solar also can be converted uh, with more efficiently to electricity. So now uh, we all use uh, battery. We, can, we use phone, laptop for in small scale and everything heats up, right? So if we can combine this battery technology with thermoelectrics, so it can also efficiently uh, convert that waste to electricity. So there, there are several uses of this thermoelectric in different uh, 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 temperature scale, starting from room temperature to very high temperature where uh, the steel is uh, in steel companies blast furnace works. Okay. So now uh, for Peltier effect, uh, the, uh, there are several products in the market for last 30-30 uh, years. So we have several instrument in the lab which, which uses Peltier coolers and there are uh, 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 this can be used for uh, uh, basically uh, environmental cooling uh, as well as several applications. So now, uh, so what is the science and what is the uh, basically chemistry or physics behind this thermoelectrics? So thermoelectric uh, efficiency uh, or thermoelectric performance of a material is governed by this ZT. Okay, so ZT is called dimensionless thermoelectric figure of money. Please note this is that this is purposefully made dimensionless. So one can compare uh, material A to material B. If the ZT is high for material B, so we can say that uh, material B is more efficient uh, thermoelectric compared to material A. So now uh, numerator of this equation is having S. S is Shebeck coefficient. The Shebeck coefficient meaning how much voltage uh, one material is generating per unit temperature difference. So that is basically delta B by delta T. So voltage uh, divided by temperature. Okay. And uh, sigma, all we know, this is electrical conductivity, how fast uh, uh, the electron and hole moves uh, in a solid material. The measure of that is called generally electrical conductivity, which, which depends on carrier concentration as well as mobility. And T is the temp temperature and uh, uh, kappa is thermal and the denominator is basically thermal uh, conductivity, kappa is thermal conductivity, how heat is transported from one end to another end uh, of a material. And thermal conductivity has two part electrical part how charge carrier uh, transport heat from one end to another end of a material and the second part is lattice which is uh, main focus of my talk today so lattice part is basically i'll come to uh, in more details how the lattice vibration or phonons can carry heat from one end to another but fortunately or unfortunately shivek uh, sigma and electrical part of the uh, thermal conductivity are interrelated so it's very difficult to tune this uh, three property at a time. And this is one of the grand challenge of this field. Uh, so thus, uh, we are more, interest, uh, uh, more interested at this moment to tune only lattice thermal conductivity because this is the only independent part of this equation. Okay. So now another uh, challenge in this field, how to decouple this electronic transport that is the numerator and the thermal transport uh, in the denominator. So how to decouple electronic and uh, thermal transport uh, uh, in a solid. So we have to channelize heat and uh, electron into different channel in a solid inorganic solid. So as a chemist, uh, we see this problem slightly different way and I feel this is very interesting. Uh, so we have to have a material which will have property of glass. So glass means uh, low thermal conductor, all we know, and property of metal, which is a high electrical conductor, property of semiconductor, which is, a, which is having high Shebeck coefficient. So now uh, uh, you can imagine uh, uh, basically how uh, 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 how much challenging is to combine glass, metal, and semiconductor in a single material. So we have to have all the property to make a good thermoelectric. Okay. So like uh, basically uh, we have to have property of glass, property of metal, and property of semiconductor in a single inorganic material. And that challenge can be taken uh, well by uh, solid state inorganic chemists. So who, who can make new materials which will have all three properties? I'll give some of the example uh, today. So uh, as a chemist, again, we always like to take help of periodic table. Okay. So last year was uh, uh, 
uh, uh, yard of periodic table so uh, if you see uh, like uh, this is the one part of the periodic table so if you go down the periodic table from say carbon to lead or oxygen to tellurium the uh, mass of the element increases so now mass of the element increases th that means in uh, basically elements become uh, heavier and heavier if you go down the periodic table so now if i combine my lattice or crystal with this heavier element such as lead telluride or tin telluride so automatically the lattice vibration actually which carries the heat uh, that becomes slower so once that becomes slower because uh, we are constructing the lattice with uh, heavy elements so it, it will have almost glass like conductivity so we have glass like thermal conductivity if you go down the periodic table now uh, we need metal like electrical conductivity so metal like electrical conductivity is that basically we have to have a uh, very very low band gap semiconductor so that we can do heavily those semiconductor and get basically metal like conductivity so now if, again if we go down the predictable if i fix a germanium or tin say you are fixing tin and going from tin oxide to tin sulfide to tin cellulite to tin telluride the band gap decreases and how the band gap decreases you can see from this simple uh, molecular orbital diagram as all of we read in uh, in bsc chemistry so if i fix the metal now if i uh, vary the uh, chalcogen the electrical conduct uh, uh, electronegativity uh, uh, decreases that the energy level goes higher uh, atomic energy level goes higher and thus basically the valence band which is constructed by uh, mainly chalcogen here goes up and the band gap decreases and the tellurides uh, are having the band gap generally 0.1 to 0.2 electron volt whereas the oxides are very high uh, or sulfides are very high band gap so better to uh, make a uh, material new material with uh, elements down the periodic table where both the property basically glass like and metal like property converts so always uh, you will see i'll give example today some of the compound we synthesize here uh, always have heavy metal based charcoal elements okay so now uh, this is the zt versus uh, 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 zt versus uh, er versus temperature curve and there are three generation of material first second and third generation of material so first generation of material has zt of 1 and the second generation of material ha having zt of 2 and third generation of material uh, which is discovered after uh, this material in 2012 are having uh, zt only between 2 to 2.5 okay so now uh, we are interested mostly in third generation material at this uh, moment but please note most of the materials are having lead either lead telluride or lead sulfide or mostly lead based so the third grand challenge in this field is to Uh, uh make highly efficient lead free material uh, for uh, desired mass market application okay now uh, i come back to the thermal conductivity so i am uh, today i am going to talk about uh, low thermal conductivity and mostly lattice uh, lattice thermal conductivity so this is a, uh, a typical uh, crystal and when the crystal that is vibrates it forms phonons and this phonons actually carries the heat from one end to another end and this phonons are generally having the wavelength one angstrom to 100 nanometer okay so now we have if we wanted to decrease the thermal conductivity we have to actually block those phonons right so now the question is how to block those phonon one idea is basically from our lab uh, uh, I'll, i'll tell in a minute but before that i'll i'll describe what are the different kinds of phonon there are two kinds of phonon one is acoustic phonon so this this uh, this line is acoustic phonon so acoustic phonons are nothing but sound waves how exactly sound wave how sound wave travels in a solid material okay so this acoustic phonons it's it generate when the all atom vibrates in same direction so now but uh, when the atom different atom vibrates in different direction this phonon is called optical phonon and this develop dipole moment automatically it can be uh, measured by raman or uh, some terahertz or ir spectroscopy so now there is uh, there, there is always a gap between energy between optical and acoustic phonon. so and this please note only acoustic phonon carries heat in a solid material which is responsible for thermal conductivity that means sound waves are responsible for thermal conductivity how to block this acoustic phonon so our idea is basically if we can uh, decrease this energy of optical phonon and uh, 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 match the energy of acoustic phonon there will be coupling between optical and acoustic phonon and automatically acoustic phonon will scatter so this is a, 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 typically our idea uh, this idea from uh, our lab so now before uh, we started what people have done in this field so, so now uh, this acoustic phonon can be scattered if we put a object which is similar size 
of the wavelength of this acoustic phonon. So generally, this acoustic phonon are uh, having the wavelength uh, in between two to twenty nanometer. So we have to have object of similar size that means nano precipitated in the bulk matter. So this is uh, so this box is a bulk material. So now we are going to put say small small nano precipitated. And which are having the similar size of the wavelength of, of this uh, heat carrying acoustic phonon. Actually, that putting this nanoparticle created a revolution in the field of thermoelectrics, and that that have given birth of many uh, new inventions. And uh, this started with this paper uh, from Northwestern Group uh, uh, in science uh, in 2004, which was that this is the typical lattice thermal conductivity for this temperature plot for this uh, Champion material lead telluride. If we do the solid solution, the thermal conductivity decreases, but not that much. So this was known from Russian group uh, in 1960s. Okay, so but this solid solution creates only atomic point defects, which scatters very very short wavelength phonons. So those are not responsible for uh, scattering uh, 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 carrying the heat in 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 this kind of tellurides and selenides. The phonon which responsible for uh, the uh, carrying heat is basically having wavelength two to uh, twenty nanometer. So this this group fast. Would make this material LAST18, which is nothing but PBT matrix, which is having very small nano precipitated uh, from say 2 to uh, 20 nanometer, which scatter phonon heavily and decreases the record low, uh, decreases the thermal conductivity to a, almost to a glass limit. And this paper actually given the birth of the field nanostructure thermoelectric. So this is not a simple nanostructure. These nanostructure are embedded in a bulk matrix. Okay. So later there are several important paper came in this field and which showed the high uh, not only nano structure if you can create hierarchical uh, nano uh, nano meso architecture like we have uh, atomic point defects we have nano precipitate we have brain boundaries then we can uh, scatter full range of phonon in this material and uh, can get uh, fast third generation material in 2012 that is uh, ZT of 2.2 in that telluride and we have contributed significantly in this field uh, from Bangalore. Uh, more importantly, we we showed first time like that basically two-dimensional nanostructures like this corrugated type of structure. Uh, if we can embed in the matrix that 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 are more efficient than this zero uh, zero D nano precipitate, which can scatter heavily this phonon, and this is well appreciated in the field. Now, the problem is that with this nanostructure, uh, basically this nanostructure very nice. It, it it scatters the phonon. It scatters the uh, heat waves. But at the same time, that point defects uh, or grain uh, like uh, dislocation in the boundary of this nano crystal and the uh, nano precipitate and the uh, matrix can scatter electron and holes, right? So when it scatter electron and hole, basically it uh, uh, decreases the mobility. So basically we compromise with the electrical conductivity all the time, uh, uh, along with decreasing the thermal conductivity. So. So this is called extrinsic approach. We uh, we put foreign nanostructure in the uh, lead telluride matrix, and uh, which uh, basically uh, gives phonon scattering. At the same time, it scatters the uh, uh, electrons and hold, and to some extent decreases the electrical uh, conductivity. So now, so what is the solution? So this is a real gap in this field. Okay. So the solution is basically to create intrinsically low thermal conductivity. So this is the uh, uh, topic uh, of today's talk. I'll, I'll be able to show two, only two examples today. So, uh, so this intrinsically low thermal conductivity is a practical interest due to robustness of the grain size, temperature range, and other structural variation. So please note, till now, uh, we are done mostly material chemistry or material science to put foreign nanostructure in the matrix, which uh, give rise to phonon scattering. Uh, heavy, but we don't need this nanostructure now because this nanostructure is good, but not that good, which can uh, 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 retain the mobility at the same time decreases thermal conductivity. So in order to do that, we have to have intrinsically low thermal conductive system. That means we will not make any nanostructure, any mesostructure, or possibly not doping, uh, but we will have low thermal conductivity. So in order to do that, we have to tweak the chemical bonding. So we have to play with real chemistry. Or we can uh, tweak the chemical bonding and lattice dynamics. Okay, so I'll show you some of the example. The first example uh, is the compound thallium AC. So I'll choose in a, uh, uh, like I'll tell in a minute why I why we, we choose this compound uh, because this thallium AC uh, shows ultra low thermal conductivity starting from point, uh, uh, 6 watt per meter Kelvin uh, to almost to the uh, uh, glass limit. 
so 0.4 watt, watt per meter kelvin and you see the comparison of the lattice thermal conductivity is lower than many state of art material but we have done not done any nano structuring any point defect or any doping so so what is happening so in order to understand that we have to uh, we have to understand the uh, crystal structure of this compound very well so and this work is has been done by uh, my student uh, moina dr uh, so uh, what is the structure of this compound before going to structure uh, please see the oxidation state of thallium in this compound which is interesting we can write this compound as thallium plus thallium plus 3 and then selenium uh, 2 minus 2 so we have mixed valence so so that, that that is the main reason we choose the compound okay so this mixed valency to have thallium plus 1 has a lone pair 6s2 lone pair while thallium plus 3 doesn't have a lone pair so this is uh, uh, very very interesting uh, so same kind of cation but one has lone pair one doesn't have so this thallium plus 3 form this nice tetrahedra which are joined in one dimensional fashion and uh, this uh, thallium plus 3 please note form covalent bonding very very strong bonding with selenium whereas thallium plus 1 which has a 6s2 lone pair uh, only form ionic interaction uh, with selenium so it has weak bonding and strong bonding so we have purposefully created a bonding hierarchy so that means we have purposefully created strong and weak bonding framework in a single compound and this thallium plus 1 with a lone pair sits in the one dimensional channel Uh, uh so this forms a like a channel type structure with a uh, something is there in the channel uh, which can vibrate slowly okay so 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 then uh, we have done uh, valence charge density and uh, electron localization function and this valence charge density shows nice covalent bonding between thallium plus 3 and selenium whereas thallium plus 1 uh, sits uh, in the body center position of a tetragonal uh, crystal and uh, it has a spherical lone pair and please remember this spherical lone pairs are very notorious to distort the structure because they try to express all the time okay so this is well known uh, in in the uh, compound like say bismuth manganate or several compound in ferroelectrics okay for long like not for long time 20 years back so so when we have plotted basically the potential energy curve with displacement this thallium plus 1 uh, which is having a weakly bonded uh, uh, framework ionic bonded framework as a flat potential so from there we predicted actually this thallium plus one actually rattles rattles means slowly vibrates in the channel okay so when it slowly vibrates it generates a uh, low energy optical phenomenon so you, uh, please remember i showed a plot where uh, basically this optical phenomenon energy can be lowered and it can be tasked to the acoustic phenomenon and optical acoustic coupling may happen so we have created very low energy optical phenomenons in this compound by uh, rightly choosing this uh, elements where this thallium plus 1 has a lone pair this lone pair is having uh, quite a uh, 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 amount of uh, instability which gives the push to another uh, lone pair and then it rattles in the channel and gives rise to this low energy optical phenomenon so now the question is uh, this low energy optical phenomenon actually scatter acoustic phenomenon and give rise to low thermal conductivity this is a very nice story but how to prove it experimentally right so in order to prove that Uh, before going to the experiment i'll show uh, the phonon calculation uh, done from our uh, my colleague professor umesh bagmore's book which shows that uh, very very low energy optical phonon this uh, and flat branches which actually uh, give indication to the rattler and this low energy optical phonons are generated from this uh, blue uh, uh, color uh, which is nothing but the thallium plus as we expected from our intuition chemical intuition this thallium plus which has having a lone pair actually creates this uh, Uh, low energy optical phenomenons and you see you see that this is these three are the acoustic modes which actually carry the heat but there is a significant amount of acoustic and optical optical mode coupling which actually scatters the phonon and give rise to ultra low thermal conductivity of the compound this purely came from the uh, perspective of bonding hierarchy which is nothing but the chemical bonding tuning and uh, but till now we have not observed that low energy optical phenomenon but we have to observe it experimentally then only we can give the full proof okay so in order to do that we have done low temperature heat capacity so low temperature heat capacity generally flow, follow debye model okay so uh, i think most model right so so this is what cp versus temper cp versus temperature versus t square plot it's supposed to follow if i take this temperature to this side this is tq law debye law but we cannot feed this low temperature heat capacity by 
Debye model. We have to invoke Einstein model in this uh, Debye so, so that we can make a Debye Einstein co combined model to fit this equation. So, so what Einstein assumed? So Einstein assumed uh, atom as a single rattle. So that's what we are seeing also in this system. So now, uh, and this Einstein low energy Einstein modes are basically uh, optical phonon modes, which actually scatters the acoustic phonon modes. Now, if I plot Cp versus Cp by T cube versus T, we see a nice peak. So this is like boson-like peak, which is generally observed in uh, disordered glasses. Okay. So what is this boson-like peak? These boson-like peaks are basically uh, excess optical phonon density. What we uh, chemically uh, predicted as well as theoretically proven. Now we are experimentally seeing these optical phonons. So then I collaborated uh, with my two collaborators, which are expert, uh, one in terahertz spectroscopy, another one is carbon spectroscopy, one is Vajay Soni from IIT Mandi and Pankoj Mondol from I ISR uh, uh, Pune. So, uh, so as this is a centrosymmetric crystal, so it will have uh, 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 like basically complementary Ramon and terahertz mode. And we see Basically, all these low energy modes, low energy optical phone modes, see the centimeter inverse. The energy is around uh, below basically 50, uh, uh, 50 centimeter inverse. So, this low energy optical phone modes actually scatters the acoustic phone uh, uh, proven by experiment that gives rise to ultra low thermal conductivity. So, I, that's why I feel this tuning of chemical bond is much more interesting compared to this nanostructuring approach. Which actually uh, see the uh, basically uh, the bonding as well as lattice dynamic picture of a crystal. So now uh, I'll change my gear. I'll give the second example where we observe this ultra low thermal conductivity. So uh, I'll give a, a very brief one slide overview of a very topical field right now. This is called topological quantum material. So uh, the, the, so th th this is buzzword basically is to topological material right now. So topo topological. So but to simplify it. Uh, so uh, there are two type of or two, uh, several type of topological insulator. The popular case is basically strong topological insulator, which is well, which is seen in the well-known bismuth selenide. Bismuth selenide meaning bi 2 ac 3 which has layered structure, quintuple layer bismuth selenide. There is a van der gap again bismuth selenide. So what is a strong topological insulator? Basically, where uh, the surface states are protected by uh, 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 metallicity. As well as uh, uh, we see uh, in strong topological insulator, we have this metallic surface states in all the direction. Whereas uh, in case uh, we have a bulk band gap as well in this material. So basically, the topological insulator will have uh, insulator or semiconductor like, like a bulk band gap, but surface are metal. Okay, and in strong topological case, this uh, uh, sur metallic surface states are surrounded in all directions. Now, in a new class of topological uh, insulator, which is called weak topological insulator, which is uh, topologically in, uh, equivalent uh, to a non-interacting uh, stack of different uh, uh, 2D strong topological insulator. So this has, uh, to certain direction, uh, metallic surface states. But the ma main point from there is basically the difference between these two is, this is a two-dimensional stack of two, two, two strong topological insulators. So let's see, Let, I'll, keep, I'll simplify it into uh, material. One is BIAC, which is newly discovered, and another one is BI2AC3, which is basically uh, 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 well known strong topological insulator. And now this two belongs to this two uh, this from this homologous series. Homologous series is a fascinating concept in solid state chemistry. Uh, we know uh, homology is a concept of mathematics, and that was applied first time in uh, solid state chemistry in, in the year around 1950s, 1970s. Uh, 60s. Okay, so this this class of compound uh, is new for metal chalcogenides. And this, if I change M and N, for example, if I uh, M is zero, this is bismuth selenide. When M equal to one and N equal to two, this is bismuth uh, again uh, BIAC. So this is a weak TI and this is a strong TI. And this BIAC has a bismuth zigzag bismuth bilayer in the van der Waals. So this is the only difference between. Uh, 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 the structure between BIAC and uh, BI2AC3, and because of this bismuth bilayer, this is weak topological insulator. But this is a two-dimensional stack of two different uh, uh, material, and here is there uh, only one type of stack. This is a strong topological insulator. But the main difference is this bismuth bilayer. Okay, so let's see the thermal conductivity. If you see the thermal conductivity, the thermal conductivity is basically uh, 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 ultra low. For bismuth selenide, like which I'm meaning BIAC, which has a bismuth bilayer, 
compared to bi to c3 the only difference is bismuth by bi so then we try to understand why this compound shows ultra low thermal conductivity we again have done low temperature heat capacity measurement it shows uh, low energy einstein modes that means optical phonons are softening in this material and that can be confirmed by boson like p peak as well and the phonon calculation shows this low energy optical phonon modes uh, this uh, purple dots uh, basically coming from the bismuth bilayer where in the case of bi to c3 this these are coming from the bismuth from the quintuple layer so later we try to visualize this eigen modes and we try we, we found it out this bismuth bilayer actually uh, vibrates slowly in this uh, channel shear type vibration which gives rise to low energy optical phonon modes and which couples with acoustic phonon and give rise to ultra low thermal conductivity so this is another way to uh, uh, predict uh, basically if we can have a selective uh, soft vibration of a uh, lattice which can give rise to optical phonon and then that, that optical phonon again can scatter acoustic okay so the last example today uh, in next 5 minutes i'll give the famous material tin telluride in in in, in uh, thermoelectric okay so tin telluride has exactly similar structure to lead telluride and also the uh, structure resemblance to basically sodium chloride which is a model system in solid state chemistry which is having a interpenetrating face centered cubic structure so tin also forms face centered cubic structure and tellurium also forms face centered cubic structure which are interpenetrated with each other and the electronic structure of the tin telluride actually uh, uh, similar to lead telluride but there is a huge gap between two valence bond i am not going to the details of electronic structure but that was the main drawback why tin telluride was not was not a popular material uh, like 7 8 years back then we we have actually make this intelluride popular in the field by tuning this electronic structure but today i'm not going to talk about any electronic structure effect in this talk so i'm going to talk about only the thermal transport which is related to the phonon so let's see this tin telluride has thermal conductivity around 3 watt per meter kelvin at uh, 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 room temperature and decreases around 1 watt per meter kelvin so now if i calculate theoretical minima of this lattice thermal conductivity if i know about the sound velocities because sound velocity actually contributes to the uh, uh, basically uh, phonon transport and then also the volume of the crystal and of course we know boltzmann constant so there is a theoretical minima of the lattice thermal conductivity is basically 0.5 watt per meter kelvin so now uh, if we can decrease the thermal conductivity from here to here so then we can will gain a lot and the zt will increase enormously for this tin telluride okay and we wanted to do without putting a nano structure without putting a meso structure without uh, uh, being any kind of materials engineer we wanted to play with chemistry uh, in this system mode okay so now uh, so uh, uh, like this this phonon spectra of tin telluride uh, is well known uh, and th this is calculated at zero kelvin uh, for a cubic tin telluride and you see there is a instability of this optical phonon and this optical phonon mode instability indicates tin telluride at low temperature has a ferroelectric phase so this ferroelectricity is a field of soft optical uh, or polar optical phonon okay so in, but in uh, low thermal conductivity or thermoelectrics we need again soft optical phonons so from there we got the idea can we combine these two field thermoelectricity and ferroelectricity okay so then we have uh, uh, seen this paper in 1975 by japanese group who predicted this uh, below 100 kelvin or below 70 kelvin there is a rhomboidal phase of tin telluride which is ferroelectric whereas above 100 kelvin the tin telluride is a global cubic structure okay so so then what we did uh, if we wanted to pull this uh, ferroelectric instability near room temperature we can use it for thermoelectric that is the idea in order to do that we have doped say germanium and i'll tell in a minute why we have doped germanium there is a logic in that Uh, behind that so this germanium uh, can bring this ferroelectric transition temperature to the uh, near room temperature this is the dsc data which shows 30% germanium to cubic tin telluride globally cubic tin telluride uh, 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 the ferroelectric instability comes near to the room temperature okay so now uh, uh, umesh uh, group they have calculated the phonon dispersion and when we have doped germanium telluride say 25% we observe huge ferroelectric instability so this is the ferroelectric instability uh, basically uh, 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 for uh, normal tin telluride but for uh, uh, for germanium doped tin telluride we see huge ferroelectric instability at gamma point and if we take a, a fourier analysis to visualize the eigen uh, vectors 
uh, we see the chain type local germanium distortion in this compound so what i mean to say i'll simplify this so the global structure of the germanium to tintulurate is cubic rock salt structure but it has basically locally the germanium atoms are distorted a bit and that distortion actually gives rise to local ferroelectricity so this is not a global ferroelectric phenomena again so this was predicted by uh, chemical intuition and theory so again how to observe this thing in experimental way right so this local ferroelectric uh, local distortion or local ferroelectric instability should show some optical phenomenon low energy optical phenomenon signature in raman spectroscopy then we again contacted uh, ajay soni from iit mandi and he uh, uh, he has shown us basically there is a uh, low energy optical phenomenon see the centimeter inverse observed in 30% uh, sample but it is absent in 20% sample so this this is signature of ferroelectric instability so then but question remains uh, what i am saying this structure is globally cubic germanium to tintulurate but we predicted locally this structure is distorted okay so how to prove it so you have to do that we have to do uh, some technique which can probe both local and global structure so i in a one slide for students i'll give basically uh, uh, different lens scale for x ray diffraction for very low q or low to theta basically we we do small angle x ray scattering middle q we can do powder x ray diffraction and very high q we can do paired distribution function analysis i have not much time uh, but i'll tell in a minute what is paired distribution function so in small angle scatter, uh, x ray scattering for example if i wanted to get a correlation between two gold particle two gold nanoparticles say we do small angle x ray, x -ray scattering if i wanted to know lattice planes of gold nanoparticle uh, i do powder x ray diffraction but if i wanted to know the gold gold ball distance for powder sample we do paired distribution function for example if i fourier transform this low low q data we come to the macromolecular unit high r but if we can uh, fourier transform this high q data basically this kind of data there is nothing actually collected from a synchrotron but if we fourier transform it we see repel which are actually in the uh, lower range so so this these are basically the bond distances okay so 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 from this paired distribution function we can directly probe this bond distances or local structural details uh, uh, from a powder sample right so this is the uh, paired distribution function uh, data collected from the uh, indian beam line uh, in in in, uh, in in dst supported uh, petra desi hamburg and then we see this first is basically uh, cation anion distance and second is second nearest neighbor and third is third nearest neighbor so now uh, uh, for this this kind of comp uh, compound so this local structure if i fit global cubic model the global structure fitted very very well but the local structure cannot be fitted by cubic model okay please note it but if i distort germanium uh, along the 111 direction that is the rhomboidal direction of a uh, uh, cubic structure the structure is fitted well in locally but global structure cannot be fitted so that means the local structure of this compound is rhomboidally distorted but the global structure is cubic so this uh, look the structure has local distortion this this has been uh, proved from this paired distribution study and let and later we have showed basically this local distortion of germanium is and point 1 angstrom whereas theory predicted point 17 angstrom and that uh, distortion remains uh, up to 600 kelvin that is the 2 tc of, of this ferroelectric transition and that gives rise to very low energy optical phenomena which we have seen by raman and that gives actual optical acoustic coupling and uh, uh, give rise to ultra low thermal conductivity in this compound so this is basically the effect of uh, engineering ferroelectric instability uh, uh, in this compound and that uh, given uh, idea for the first time in the field how this ferroelectricity uh, or ferroelectric instability can tune this thermoelectric parameters rather than thermal conductivity and we have obtained a very high zt of 1.6 which is kind of record in 2019 for tintel right so with that Uh, the last uh, example in one minute i'll finish is basically tin selenide so this tin selenide is a layered compound again it has a layered uh, structure and it, it has created sensation in the field of thermoelectric because back to back many important paper came in 2014 and 2018 which, which showed that this tin selenide in the form of single crystal please note it shows a zt of around 2.6 but the point is this paper this two paper has given very uh, many new concepts the concept is uh, this this kind of crystal has uh, uh, huge anharmonicity 
so it has very high coordination parameter and gives rise to ultra low thermal conductivity uh, but in the form of single crystal but this single crystal cannot be used for day to day life right because the make, making cost is high and it's it's, it's it, it, it takes at least one month to make this kind of this quality high uh, high quality single crystal okay so we thought can we make a nano crystalline sample of this uh, tin selenide and actually we made it by very simple reaction i am not going to the details but we made a two dimensional nano plate of that uh, for the first time and this two dimensional nano plate shows a zt of 2 and this this process can be scaled up, up to uh, 10 uh, 10 gram and that this has been done uh, by a junior student in my lab uh, susmita susmita chandra so so with that now i'll come to the almost to the summary slide where we stand uh, uh, from our thermoelectric research in, in, in compared to the world thermoelectric research. So if you see this is ZT versus temperature plot. Uh, so uh, the room temperature region, the main material is bismuth uh, telluride base, which are mostly discovered from South Korea, Boston and uh, Houston, both are from USA. At the high temperature region, the material, chalcogenide material are basically tin selenide, which is discovered from uh, Beijing. Uh, uh, as well as uh, later PBT based uh, uh, discovered from Chicago and then SNSE also from JNC. But at the mid temperature region, actually, we have material from JNC SR which actually uh, take a place in this uh, kind of uh, summary plot. And then we have made device which which outperform uh, uh, most of the state of the uh, device. Which we have a, get a single leg uh, device efficiency of 12 mole percent, which is cool. Which is of course uh, uh, a good uh, effort of a good collaboration uh, uh, with, with my colleague uh, from Bark, and uh, uh, with this uh, we have a significant collaboration and a, a research agreement with Tata Steel because Tata Steel company has actually uh, uh, creates lots of waste heat every day. So our goal is to uh, 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 convert this waste heat from these uh, uh, water pipes. So generally low grade waste heat, the target temperature is 105 to 110, uh, 110 degree centigrade. So we have uh, like some new material in this area and uh, we are collaborating for last almost one year with Tata Steel. With that, I come to the conclusion. So intrinsically low thermal conductivity is an attractive paradigm for developing high performance thermoelectric. So I have given a few uh, uh, innovative uh, concepts which can tune the chemical bonding. First is bonding hierarchy. We can create uh, covalent and uh, weak ionic uh, substructure uh, in, a, in a crystal so that we can have a uh, rigid uh, covalent structure which can take care of the electronic transport whereas the weak ionic trans weak, uh, ionic substructure can actually tune the uh, lattice vibration whereas uh, selective soft vibration from a lattice can also give rise to low thermal conductivity and we have created a concept how ferroelectricity and thermoelectricity can combine and uh, like benefit this thermoelectrics and also uh, we choose this kind of compounds by seeing the crystal structure where uh, if we see like a large atomic displacement parameter of a single uh, lat uh, atom in a lattice I, uh, and then a strained lone pair, I think that will be a good candidate for low thermal conductivity. And I thank all of my excellent students. So, uh, so uh, generally many idea comes from them. Actually most of the idea comes from them. And uh, uh, now uh, most of the people are in home. Uh, so, uh, and then I have excellent collaborator. Uh, starting from Umesh Bhagwande, uh, who has contributed significantly uh, uh, in this work. Also, Ajay Soni from IIT Mandi, uh, Shobhit Bhattacharya from Tata, uh, Bark for device, Pankaj Mondol for terrier spectroscopy, and I have uh, two important collaborators, uh, Supriyo Sarkar and Neha Agarwal from Tata Steel as well. I also thank generous funding, um, uh, recently from uh, Sonojanti Fellowship, ACRB and DST, Materials for Energy uh, Storage, DST. Uh, my seed funding when I started in 2012, New chemistry unit as well as Shekshaka laboratory and recently one from Tata Steel. So uh, thank you all. I'm happy to answer all the questions.